We are back on Morning Line, our final segment with Billy Teets, director of the Dyer Observatory, talking about the show being put on by the James Webb Space Telescope. More images. Look, we just have one segment left here, just a few minutes. Uh, you know, Billy, are there some other images you can just share with us uh, that you can briefly just tell us what we're looking at? Yeah, I'd be happy to. Sure. Um, so one of the other big images that came out was of the Carina Nebula. Wow. Uh, so this is uh, this is actually just a small portion of the nebula, but it, it's not visible here from, in Tennessee. But down south, you can actually see it. Um, and it's just a, a big star forming region within our own galaxy. Huh. So this again is a, a view in the infrared and uh, what we're seeing are numerous stars but more importantly uh, the these big clouds that form these stars have lots of dust which makes it hard to actually see inside of these clouds and and see what's going on um, I've got a, a comparison here actually Hubble uh, looked at uh, this uh, this portion of the nebula a, a few years ago I'm going to overlay so you can kind of get a, a little bit yeah. of an idea of the in the view there. Um, so we'll do a, a you know there's a mm -hmm. an after and then four. But what you'll notice is that especially in the area uh, where it appears darker, where there's lots of dust, right. you're not able to see very many stars in there. But if we go back to the infrared view now, you can see right through a bunch of that that gas and dust. So we're able to peer into these uh, these stellar nurseries, and and learn more about how uh, these stars are forming, what processes are are going on. Um, so you know we're seeing a little bit of star birth there. Um, and then the, the final series of images I'll, I'll show, this is a really nice view of something called the Southern Ring Nebula. Hmm. Uh, there's a very famous object uh, that uh, backyard telescopes can easily see in, in our skies called the Ring Nebula. Uh, it's a nice summertime object, but uh, this is the southern view or, or the, uh, the southern version of that, uh, only visible down in the southern hemisphere. And, and what we're seeing are two views of the same object. Uh, this is a, a dying star, uh, or a star really that has died. And the beautiful nebula that you're seeing in the near infrared view, uh, and then in the mid infrared view, so these are views taken from two different cameras on web, uh, these beautiful structures you're seeing are the, the outer layers of the dead star that were expelled thousands of years ago. In fact, um, at the especially on this right side view here, you see what looks like two stars at the center. Um, in fact, that's what we're seeing. Um, the fainter one uh, on the left there, that is the star, that is the core of that star uh, that has died. Um, the other star, is, the brighter one, is a companion that's in orbit with that star. And that star is still living, but its, its gravity uh, has influenced the shape of this nebula. And so this kind of gives astronomers insights into how um, these uh, what are known as planetary nebulae, uh, um, you know, how uh, they can be affected by, by things such as a binary star system. Um, and for comparison, Hubble did view this one as well. So this yeah. is a scaled image. So you can see that there are some details that Hubble wasn't able to see sure. uh, because you know, it was looking in visible light, uh, whereas Webb is looking in infrared. Now, that doesn't mean that, you know, Hubble gave us a bad view. Definitely not, because Hubble's able to show us things that Webb can't show us. Uh, so, you know, in the in the coming years, uh, hopefully, we'll have at least a few uh, more years uh, out of uh, out of the Hubble Space Telescope. Uh, but there will be times where Hubble and Webb will be looking at the same object um, at at the same time, because Hubble will be looking in, yeah. in visible light. Webb will be looking at infrared, and so it's like we're using different senses to be able to see exactly what's going on with you know an object in space. So you know it's giving us a more complete picture I of what's going on. That's and you know real, and I'm glad I was going to ask you what the fate was of Hubble moving forward. So it's still with us and will continue to operate at least for the next few years. Real quick, if you can just give me, we just have a few minutes here, a couple minutes left. Just give me a couple word answer on how big is the Webb Space Telescope? I'm curious. Is it as big as a tractor trailer? Is it uh, as small as a VW Bug? How big is it? So uh, two ways to answer that. The mirror of Webb is, um, it's about 21 feet wide. Okay. Here is oh, a comparison go. of Webb and Hubble. Uh -huh. And then let me start the, you know, you'll see a little, uh, you'll see a person at the bottom just to kind of give you an idea. <laughs> yeah, okay, the, that's the, perfect. The defining feature, uh, 
of Webb is this big sun shield that keeps the telescope very cold. That's about the size of a tennis court, about 50 by 70 feet. Amazing. Uh, Do you know, so, are, they, are they working on uh, any other additional telescopes to go up in the years to come that maybe will give uh, even another aspect of what we're looking at? Yes, yeah, so um, there are, um, there's an, another infrared telescope that's going to be going up, which is wider field. Uh, it's uh, called the Nancy Grace Roman Telescope, and uh, that will uh, hopefully be launched, I believe is around 2026. Um, there are X-ray telescopes uh, that are out in space, um, and and more of those will be coming online and, in 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 God, there's so many questions years, so. I have for you too. And by the way, just as we wrap things up, uh, do other countries have telescopes up like this as well? Maybe that we you know they do on their own, or do we kind of share this data? Um, for for Webb, this was actually a, an international collaboration. Okay. So it was between NASA, uh, the European Space Agency, which is like Europe's version of NASA, and the Canadian Space Agency. So right. a lot of different countries contributed uh, to to doing this. So uh, some like the 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 ESA European Space Agency has its own X-ray telescope, whereas you know the NASA has you know its own X-ray telescope called Chandra. So, uh, but. Anybody, um, it, these telescopes are accessible to uh, any astronomer around the globe. You've just got to put in the proposal and you've got to have it accepted. Listen, uh, this has just been awesome, uh, Billy. I really appreciate you coming on, showing us some of these images. Uh, yeah. I think it's great. You've got a really neat job. And you have, you have to promise me that when Webb, if and when it gets a nice snapshot of an alien waving to us from some galaxy, that you will call us <laughs> first and say, Nick, I want to come on and share that image with you. I'd be happy to. <laughs> I figured as much. Billy Teets, thank you for coming on this morning, uh, Director of Dyer Observatory. Yeah. Hopefully we'll talk again and have a very pleasant weekend, my friend. Thanks for coming on. All right. Thank you very much for All having right. me. Take care. Thank you so much. We'll right. take a break, Bye. and I'll be back to wrap things up, everyone, right after this. Stay with us.